Alright, so welcome back to a new one on this channel and on this one we need to talk about scenes. Now in the past, if you wanted to try different versions of a mix, we had to save it as or maybe if we want to A, B to compare, you know, one track with a different version of the track, we had to export stem or maybe the whole track, import it here on your session and then A, B and that sucks. So Scenes solves that in real time very easily. So I have a simple loop right here I made, I made with, a, with a pool, you know, the loops that you get from factory when you uh, get to Studio One, and I'm going to be playing it. Alright, it's super simple, it's pretty much the same thing over and over. Okay. And I made it, you know, with, with the files that you get, so you can recreate this if you wish. Now, uh, how can we access scenes? All the way at the bottom, right here, you have this icon. If you open it, it's going to say scenes at the top. Now, you have two sections. The one at the top, where you get the scenes name, and at the bottom, you get the recall options. We are going to be talking about the recalling in a minute, but you need to make sure that all the options right here are checked. Right, so let's say that this is my starting, you know, starting mix and we have nothing, just no panning, maybe a little bit of volume, but you know, there's nothing going on, just a couple of plugins. So I want to say that this one, I want to store this version of the mix as a, you know, as an initial state of my mix so I can go back later and just, you know, get it back. How can we do this? Well, we need to go to scenes and whenever you store a scene is going to store pretty much everything you have on the console. It doesn't matter what you have right here. It's going to store everything. Okay, so you need to go to the plus icon. So when you click it, it's going to ask you. So you need to really, um, you know, think of it, think of a proper name. I'm going to call it ground zero, just, you know, for the sake of a demonstration. I'm going to say ground zero. It's going to be my starting mix. So I'm going to say OK. And now you get it right here. All right. So let's say that now I'm going to make some adjustments, right? So I'm going to be changing maybe some panning and it doesn't matter. I'm just doing this randomly. I'm going to be doing this. Let me just play it back so I can make it a little bit more fun. So we have the drums right here. All right. So snare in the back, maybe something like that. And I'm going to be going down to the bass, the chords, and maybe the pluck. And I'm going to be putting it right there on the left. And again, I'm doing this a little bit randomly. So for, for the sake of demonstration. All right. So let's say that I just did some, you know, panning. Uh, gain staging and so on and so on. So I want to store this as a second uh, mix start. So you do the same process. You go right here, you go to add scene, and now you save it as a mix start, something like that. And I'm going to say OK, and now it's going to save a second scene. Now notice that now it's standing on the second one and now not on the first one. So this means that now we are working with the this version, the mix start and not the ground zero. Now what if I decide that this is crap and I want to go back to ground zero so I can start over? Now the only thing you need to do to go back to this version is to double click ground zero and notice that everything is back to default. Now, if I wanted to go back to mix start, I can just go back and we recall pretty much everything that we did right here. So this is super useful. So you can store different versions as you, you know, start your mix and you start completing and, you know, you go through the timeline of creating a mix. You can store the different parts right here until, you know, you get to the last one. Now, uh, this has a different application, which is going to be uh, checking the uh, mix in real time. So if I play it, we have, we are listening to the mix start. I can compare it with the ground zero or whatever other version and it's going to happen in real time, which is again, super great. All right. All right. Now, when you save a scene, it saves everything, including plugins, inserts, and uh, you know, everything pretty much. So let's say that for this uh, mix start, I forgot to do a couple things and I want to maybe, or just maybe add some plugins or maybe do some other things. And I want to update whatever we did right here. All right. So I'm going to be going to the effects and I'm going to be adding some, you know, some plugins. There we go. A few EQs so we can, you know, really see the difference that we did something different. And again, I'm doing this for the sake of demonstration. 
Okay, so I've added a, a few plugins, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be adding something from FabFilter. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna grab it and gonna maybe throw it right here, and I'm gonna maybe do it on the instrument. So uh, you know, you can see that uh, it works with native plugins, or you know, outside you know, developers plugins or third-party plugins. And now I want to save this state as my mix start. I don't know how it's gonna sound. So I want to save this, right? So this is going to be my real mix start. So the only thing you need to do to update is just to go right click on this one. You need to be standing right here, of course, and you can say update a scene. So I'm gonna click it and there you go. You just updated the scene. It's gonna store pretty much everything. Now again, if we want to AB, we can go to ground zero and notice that all the plugins are gone. But if I wanted to go back to the other one, we recall it with whatever it is that we did with the uh, plugins, all right? So, super cool. So another cool application like the AB that we did right here, when you have a more, you know, polished uh, track or polished mix, maybe you can, you know, have a pre, like have a right here, which is a, a ch the channel, the final channel where everything is going and this one is going to the main bus. So right here, it could create different chains for the pre-master and then we just, you know, we, we can A, B and cho choose the one we like the most. Now, for example, I'm going to be storing a new scene and I'm going to be calling this master whatever master one there we go so i'm going to save it and now i'm going to be going to some inserts and i'm just going to do this you know quickly i'm going to be maybe going right here and choose an option i'm going to go for, i'm going to go with channel so i'm going to select it and now we have you know some options for that channel so i want to store this version made some changes i'm going to right click and i'm going to update the scene and notice that you do have all the options like recall we're going to talk about this in a minute you can rename it if you wish, and you can remove it. Now I'm going to be updating, so this is going to be my master one. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to uh, maybe mastering, and I'm going to choose a different chain. Maybe I'm going to I'm going to go I'm going to go with this one. Easy does it. Why not? I'm going to select that one, and it's going to change the chain completely. So now I want to A B compare master one with master two. So I'm going to be storing a new scene so i'm gonna go to two and i'm gonna say that this one is my master two so now we have two completely master chain so if i play it we can a b compare whatever is that we do so this one is a little bit more you know finished let's say and we can decide which one we like the most you can try different plugins different chains and it's a super useful feature i wish all dos have this option all right so this is an, yet another way of using the scenes. All right, so let's say that I didn't like everything I did. It's trash. I want to get rid of this. So remember, you can do right click and you can just, you know, remove it. So maybe I'm going to stand on ground zero or maybe in mix start. Then I'm going to double click. It loads the mix start and I'm going to right click right here and remove the scene and remove the master one. So we are back to the beginning. So in conclusion, whatever you do is gonna be stored on a scene. Now, the thing is that you have the other side of this, which is not the storing, it's gonna be the recalling. And this is why you do, you know, you have the options right here. You can decide what is, uh, you know, you want to recall when you double click in a scene. Now, everything is it gets stored, but you can choose what to recall. And you know, it's a little bit, little bit different, but you know, don't worry, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an example. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna make some changes, pretty obvious changes. If I want to recall it, when I double click, it's gonna recall everything, right? Okay, so I'm gonna be adding some plugins right here so I can make it a little bit more obvious gonna maybe uh the saturn and i'm gonna go all the way to the right so we can you know see the difference right here so we could double click on the mix start and disregard everything that we did right here but maybe i just don't want to do this maybe i like what what i did with the plugins but i don't like what i did with the uh, with, with the panning right or maybe the volume changes i'm gonna i'm gonna be I'm gonna do something like this so again it's just obvious so when you double click if you recall, recall it like, like that and all the options are checked, it's going to recall everything. But I want to keep the volume and I want to keep the panic because let's just pretend I, I, I like that. So you need to decide which things you want to recall. If everything is checked, it's going to recall everything. But I don't want to recall volume. I don't want to recall, recall pan. And maybe let's say uh, I'm going to be recalling everything else. So if I recall it now, it's going to bring everything back to the beginning, but not the panning and not the volume. So if I double click it, notice that 
It's removing the plugins and everything else, but I'm keeping the volume and the panning changes. So this is the way it works. You can decide what you want to recall. Now, still, all this was stored in the memory of the mix start. If you want to recall it back and you didn't update it, just like cl you know, clicking update scene, you can, you know, just click it and double click because you never stored the changes and go back to whatever you had before. I mean, yeah, this is a cool, nice way to recall, decide what you want to recall when you recall a scene. And visibility is the, if you, hidden, you have hidden channels, in search is the plugins that you can decide sense, cue mixes if you're using it. And right there at the bottom, you have the input channels and output channels that you can recall that or not if you, if you don't want to. Right, so these are the recall options, pretty understandable. Now, then you have a different option that says selected channels only. So this, what it does, it means that when you recall something, it will only recall the selected channel. If you recall it and this one is selected, it's going to only recall from this scene whatever you have on that, you know, on that, on that uh, scene on the hats. Or maybe you can select multiple uh, channels and it will only recall whatever you have on these four channels and not on the rest of the channels. All right, so let's again create an example. I'm going to be adding again more plugging so we can have something different. I'm going to be changing the panning and I'm going to be maybe just, you know, doing something obvious. On this one, which is the hats, I'm going to go all the way to the right and I'm going to again make some changes. And I'm going to be again just changing volumes, just making it a little bit different. So let's say again that I just don't like what I did and I want to go back to the mix start, but maybe I like what I did on the hats. So if we enable the selected channels, we can maybe select all the channels and deselect the hats. So it will only revert back to whatever you have on mix start for whatever channel you have selected, but not the one that it's not selected, which is the hats. So I'm going to be double clicking and it's going to recall everything, but it's not recalling the hats. Again, so this is a nice way, nice way to control it. Now, still remember that if you select it and you click uh, mix start, it's going to revert to whatever you have right here. So if you want to store this version of the hat as a final version of the mix start, you need to go right here and update the scene as a, you know, that's the last thing you did and is the last version of the mix start. Another cool thing about this is that you might have a different scene and you can load parts of different scenes. And again, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to add more plugins just again so we can really see the difference and just again make some changes. So again, we can notice the difference. OK, so I want to store this as a something else. So I'm going to call it, I don't know, drums change or something like that. I'm going to say OK. So now it's going to store a different version of whatever we had right here. So now I'm going to be unchecking this selected channel only. And now I'm going to be double clicking mix start. And then, you know, we clearly have a change on this scene. So if I go back to mix start, uh, let's say that I want to recall whatever is that we have maybe, I don't know, on the on the right. Right. So I'm going to use this example. So if I go right there, we can see that it's uh, the panning is different and, you know, we have a, a tiny little plugging right there at the top. I want to recall the version that we have on the mix start. So if I do select the channels only, I'm going to be enabling this option and I can I'm going to go to the rights. So now since this one is selected, if I click mix start, it's going to load this channel only, the right channel only. And now we have a combination of the drum channel, whatever we have, you know, on the, the current state and the mix start. And again, the same thing, but backwards, I'm going to be unchecking select channels only. And I'm going to be loading whatever we have on the drum channel. And I could select everything, check selected channels only and uncheck whatever we have on the hats, for example, and just, you know, go to the mix start and it's going to pretty much load whatever we had on the mix start, but not, you know, the hat. So we are doing the, the, the same thing, but but backwards. All right, so that's it pretty much. You can store, uh, you know, all the different versions of your mix, you know, just like uh, use it like a repository. Maybe record the progression of your mix, maybe the uh, gain station, then, you know, maybe you do EQ and compression, then, you know, you add uh, reverbs and, you know, depth to your tracks or maybe buses and, you know, everything that you do, you can log it right here. All right, so that's it. So hopefully you learned something on this one. And remember to like and subscribe if you did. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. 
go to the links at the description and you have the QR on the screen, on the screen uh, too. And you have, uh, you know, PayPal, Patreon and YouTube. Thanks. All right. So see you on the next one.